Bwindi Community Hospital started as a mobile outreach open air clinic for the Batwa. That is after they left the forest around the 1991 and they had no access to healthcare, social services, and uh, they really had nothing that they would call their own. Their situation was in dire need that uh, by the year 2000, the infant mortality rate among them was about 40. And so the local church thought if nothing is done to help, the rest was going to get extinct and uh, try to source for support. That's how the local church, uh, through its contacts and uh, a partner church in the US managed to send a missionary doctor, Dr. Scott Kellerman, to reach out to the health of the Batwa. So between the year 2000 to 2003, it was largely an open air clinic. And uh, the Batwa population was very few. When uh, he would come to Bohoma, where currently the hospital is, there was no closed health facility. The closest was about about 30 kilometers away. And so the nun but also decided to come on some days he would see over 500 people. Mm -hmm. As the numbers got out of hand, that's when he had to think about uh, putting a stationed clinic so that he wouldn't have to transport drugs every day within his truck. And uh, it is uh, through that time that we've been now able to grow from what started as a small open air clinic under a tree we've now been able to grow to a hospital with 150 bed capacity. We have uh, two satellite clinics attached to the facility. One is 25 kilometers away and the other is 37 kilometers away. The reason we have them is to see how we can ease access of health services for those communities that are far from Windy or from where we are. Actually, we are yet to start ICU services or intensive care services which will be serving a population of close to 3 million people in the region. And uh, we are aiming at how we can be able to provide care that is sustainable and high quality or excellent for this community. We did to start training so that we can train health uh, workers who will be able to help sustain the service in uh, settings like this that have uh, low resources for health. So we have two training schools already. One is training nurses and midwives and the other school is training uh, clinical officers who would be like physicians assistants. And uh, our hope is that uh, we can grow and train nurses, rather degrees in nursing, medicine, public health, and then be able to also train more other health cadres that can help with service delivery in the community. Actually, for that reason, our bed capacity currently is uh, 150 beds, and uh, we have uh, we get to see about 40,000 consultations at our outpatient. Our services range from uh, pediatrics, maternity, surgery. And for a population of close to 300,000, this is the only place that one can be able to get surgery from. And uh, also we have a very strong community health outreach program. And uh, at least uh, we have been lucky to get support through the Azimuthi Worldwide Fund, which is helping us to reach out to the Batwa, the indigenous group of the Batwa so that we can improve their hygiene, sanitation, and also help them to be fully integrated in the community. I'm called Yusuf Kule. I am the coordinator for the community health and battle program area at Windy Community Hospital. I coordinate all the activities, the outreach activities, especially for by nurses who go to the settlements or villages for the battle. I also coordinate the mental health or psychosocial support for the whole program area, but also for the battle in our immediate catchment area.
Amo and Mr. Davis and uh, work as a nurse in the community department. And uh, what I do in the Batwa settlement is to help educate the Batwa about immunization. And then we do malnutrition screening. Also, I usually go with my vaccines in the Batwa settlement and I immunize those who are eligible, especially those from uh, six weeks because when they are born from the hospital, they usually receive the uh, BCG vaccine and polio vaccine. Then from there, they are supposed to receive from the nearby clinic or in a healing outreaches. So most of the time I go with vaccines. Then with those who are eligible from six weeks up to one year, I usually vaccinate them when they are in their settlement. Um, I, what I've found very rewarding with this project is the improvement of our communication system. As already known, we, we, we didn't have direct communication with the villages or the Batwa. But in this project, you know, we've given all the community health volunteers among the Batwa, each one has been given a phone. So now communication with the Batwa is really very good. The other rewarding component of it is the lighting system. Remember in this project, we provided solars for each of the villages. Mm -hmm. Reports from community members indicate the solar system is working very well because now each community member charges from their phones from the solar mm -hmm. system that is provided. Feedback from them really, they are very happy about this arrangement. To me, I found again that because many times you'd spend three days without communicating to any of the members in the villages, but now when you call a phone, they'll tell you it is on and communication is now very, very easy. Maybe. Then also identify pregnant mothers. I uh, educate them about the importance of attending antenatal care. Then I keep following them to check where they, they had to go to for antenatal services in a nearby uh, health care facilities. I usually encourage them to come to the hospital because they need to deliver when they are under specialized care, especially maybe if they need like surgery, it is done. We have reduced the home deliveries of the butter to zero. Currently, every month is delivering from the HSA facility, and this is a great improvement. And uh, mm -hmm. so far, I haven't registered any maternal deaths, and also I'm seeing uh, we have reduced child death also. Uh, then another. Health education I usually do is about hygiene. Yes, we received the money from Azimus uh, mm -hmm. to improve the hygiene. And I was able to distribute all the uh, hand washing facilities. And also I had to help them to construct the hand washing facilities. On hand washing, I think uh, by then we are at 17%, but after distributing these hand washing facilities, we are at a hundred percent. Then uh, on storage containers, some had no storage containers. They don't, they never had where to put water after preparing it, but now most of the about what they have. Uh, another update is about uh, skin infections, some most of that has some skin infection, but because of my health education, they are trending reducing because now they can wash, they can base. I think the target we set for, for this year under this funding, we had said the skin diseases, we needed them to be below um, uh, 5%. And I think this is achievable because already in the baseline, we are seeing that we are around 6.5%.
So I think by the end of this year for us, when we are very sure that this is going to be below 5% by the end of this year. Then uh, we had a challenge. We still have some challenges of uh, alcohol abuse, but we are trying slowly by slowly. Uh, we try to educate them not to take a lot of alcohol because it is bringing a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. But I am trying, I'm trying to address this issue in the settlement. Other psychosocial issues stood at 35.5%. Uh, we are happy to report that uh, by the end of last quarter, I think when we are at the baseline, this has reduced to 33.3%. Mm -hmm. But that is still a challenge because even now, we still admit a number of patients. So people who come, for instance, with alcohol intoxication, some have other withdrawal effects in the hospital. Mm -hmm. But we think with the support from Asmuth uh, World Foundation, this is going to change, which is, as we've said, we are aiming at making sure by the end of the year that we are sponsored with this fund, this reduces to below 15%. Uh, right now, the most stressing issue is famine among the Abatwa. Again, maybe we had thought that the chicken, chicken would have really uh, given us a big uh, push, especially when it comes to nu nutrition. Mm -hmm. But now with this farming and also the diseases for the chicken, I think there's some bit of uh, setback because the number of them already have died. Mm -hmm. But at least we were happy to report that uh, I think by the time we started distributing them, we had, I, I think so far by the end of last uh, month, we had already seen them lay uh, around 4,800 eggs, which are the children I'm feeding on, which, which would have been good. But now with the farming, we are, we are a bit uh, pessimistic that this may not work out because of the diseases. And you see, sometimes we've had already reports that some of them are using them for food. They are eating the yeah, chicken. The chicken so, yes. so In the long-term goals, for us, we are thinking we need to empower them to do things on their own. Like now in the, in the pit latrine construction, in fact, in like in this fund that Asmuth World Foundation has given us, we've even put a section where we are buying tools for them to use to, to do the construction. So we are thinking like going forward, we don't have to... To, to have the team from Windy or BDP to go and do the construction. So we are thinking that would be emphasized in the long term so that they don't only based on external support, only direct support. Uh, this kind of direct funding or assistance needs to continue. But in the long term, we want to say they need to be empowered to do some of the things on their own. Mm -hmm.